this is what happens when you cut down a tree in the forest here at least in Canada I'm in so, uh, central Ontario Canada in a deciduous forest just south of the boreal forest mm -hmm. the transition of the boreal forest and got some pretty deep soils here and very uh, I would say dense and uh, productive forests so what I have here around me on the property is a mixed forest um, primarily I would say 90% deciduous and sugar maple is the dominant species here got uh, yellow birch and paper birch uh, what else beech oak uh, some red maple um, what else immediately around me I think that's pretty well it um, these saplings are mostly sugar maples and then I have hemlock, balsam fir, spruce, and cedar behind me as well and in front of me. So this is actually what happened. So I cut this tree down when? Last fall, I think it was, in anticipation of expanding the vegetable garden, which is right here behind me. Tiny little opening, uh, the sunniest spot on the property, fortunately and unfortunately. And I'll get into that in a bit. But um, I cut this one tree down, and then another tree fell down in a windstorm right here. And it opened up the canopy and let the sun shine in here not that much actually just uh, sort of half a day or maybe a third of a day of sunshine and this is what happened all these saplings sprouted and uh, started growing the seedlings so these ones here would have already started a couple years ago or a few years ago but all these seedlings down at ground level just sprouted this spring and i'll show you there's massive amount of them like countless and this is typical. This is typical of what happens in our forest. If a tree falls down, if there's any kind of disturbance that allows the sunlight through to reach the, the forest floor, it's just a, a, a proliferation of plant starts growing. And um, here I've got so many uh, tree seedlings that uh, that's the thing that typically starts immediately starts sprouting. So my challenge is, that's all great and it's nice if you're trying to establish a new forest or to, to uh, um, sequester more carbon or something. But what I'm trying to do is create a clearing here for a workshop, a greenhouse and an expanded vegetable garden. So my plan, what I'm doing today is clearing more of this out. Basically I'm going to have to race nature to replace this flora that's proliferating here with species that are beneficial to me and to wildlife and uh, that's going to be a challenge I'm going to have to work quickly so the plan is just to scrape this all away get these get a few more trees down get more sunlight in here get the greenhouse built get my workshop built and have this south facing slope to plant sort of a terrace vegetable garden and at the back of the garden what I'm doing is replacing these sort of monocrop species of maple of uh, sugar maples with uh, more variety so I've got some nut trees hazelnut uh, pin cherry choke cherry uh, wild plum and things like that so what's going to benefit me my family and wildlife that's the that's the plan I've got those plants with me I'm going to try to get enough clear that I can get those in get them established um, without um, having them get in the way of my construction that I'm going to be doing here for the rest of the summer so my dream for this property just a little backstory. my dream for this property was always to have it as a food forest where I could walk through the uh, 20 or 30 acres here and uh, the surrounding crown land and be able just to forage and get enough sustenance from the land in um, a form of plant material as well as animals, uh, meat. Um, you know, it's, it's partially doing that. It's, uh, you know, providing some of my calories, but not enough. So. Um, part of also like that dream like I said was to forage through this land but also to create little clearings plant better food sources and be able to kind of just walk through trails picking food here and there all summer long and fall so that's what I'm working on and that's what I'm going to continue to do every time a tree comes down I'm going to replace it or plant something that that's beneficial to me and to wildlife um, berries nuts uh, other vegetables, um, mushrooms, I have a ton of mushrooms in this forest, but I want to sort of cultivate them, make them a little bit more productive. Uh, the sugar maples are going to continue to help those out by creating enough sunlight that, and less competition around some of the better, healthier sugar maples so that they can produce better, they can grow better. 
So I've got a got my work cut out for me. It's a lifetime project and something I really really enjoy. So to me, it's not work. It's just part of life and. Um, just watching this place evolve and become more productive and more suitable for uh, cohabitation between m myself, family, friends, and wildlife is my goal. So keep planting fruit bushes, bring in as many birds and pollinators and insects as I can, and just make it a super productive place. That's that's why I bought it. That's why we built uh, the homestead here, and so I'm going to continue to do. So I hope that answers you, uh, the questions I get often about the trees and. Um, how many trees I cut down, how many I utilize, and uh, how I replace those. Nature does the replacement for me, and uh, my job is to help it along with, um, so that we integrate into this environment without creating a negative impact or as little impact as possible. Um, I think I'm so far doing a pretty good job, and I'm looking forward to improving the job that I'm doing. So that being said, bugs are starting to find me here, so I have to keep moving so they don't uh, find my location and, and start feasting on me. But until I get this brush cleared out and get some wind through here and sunlight, the bugs are gonna continue to be fairly bad. Anyway, that's it. So I'm gonna get back to work. If uh, you like this video or you wanna see what's uh, going on on the homestead, um, please subscribe to this channel and to the other channel. You'll see a wide variety of content all related to wilderness living and, and uh, outdoor living in Canada. And of course, self-reliance being uh, the name of my main channel, my self-reliance. It's um, focused primarily on becoming less and less dependent on the on society and on the grid, and learning to live with nature as cheaply and as sustainably as possible. So, like I said, if you're interested in this stuff, please check out both channels, subscribe, and um, hope you enjoy it. Hope you maybe learn something as I'm learning each, each day. So. I'm going to get back to work. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you at the cabin next time. Take care.